How about start your team with Shaq or Kobe? <laughs> Ooh, we that, got Shaq coming up. That that's a, is that's tough. A fair question. Okay. Is it though? Well, do you have an obvious answer? I do. Okay. What year of the NBA is it? Well, that's what I was going to ask, but Seton already has his his uh, pick there. Who do you take? Kobayashi. Okay. All right. It, it's Shaq. You take Shaq. For a team? In 1995, Shaq. Okay. I'm going Shaq, too. Well, wait. Are we playing basketball in 1995, or are you just taking – you get Shaq from 1995? No, no. We play, we're playing basketball in 95. Oh, like, right now, Shaq's not going to yeah. help anybody. Okay. Paulie, who do you take? This is really, really tough. Uh, I'm going to take Kobe because his mentality on the team. His effect on the team. Yeah. I, him. I would take Kobe, too. I mean, you start to look at these numbers. Um, let me see. Here, Kobe, Kobe won 62% of his games. Averaged 25, 5, and almost 5. Um Sort of same numbers in the postseason. Had won uh, five NBA championships, uh, two Finals MVP, uh, and he I think won one MVP, regular season MVP. Does that sound right? Shaq, twenty three ten. He won sixty one percent of his games. Four time NBA champ, Finals MVP three times. He won the MVP one time, and then uh, they won titles together. Yeah, I, I, I guess I would go Kobe. Seems like Kobe could play in any era. Thomas in Florida joins us. Good morning, Thomas. What do you have for me? Morning, Dan. Great show. Thanks for taking the call. Sure. Um, now, I, I really wanted to touch on uh, the Shaq-Kobe kind of who you would start your team with things because there's a point that I, that I don't think that's really being discussed. All right. Um, now, I would take Shaq without a doubt and, sur and surround him with three-point shooters, and he and here's why. McLovin, do you still have up the uh, stats from Shaq, the points and rebounds? Yep. So now th think about that, and the centers that are nowadays, uh, they're kind of fragile. They're not true centers and tough, kind of like they were when Shaq was in the league. Now think about what he was doing against the solid centers and true centers from back then, what he could do to the centers that play nowadays. Now you'd have to double team him, and that leaves open three-point shooters. And I, I, I just don't see anyone being able to take care of him one-on-one. -on -one. All right. Well, thanks for the phone call, Thomas. Yes, he Isn't there a reason, though, that those centers have disappeared? Yeah, because it's a three-point shooting game. Yeah. Yeah. Shaq's going to have to guard your guy out there, too. So that'll be a mismatch out there on the perimeter. I mean, it's not like tall guys went away. <laughs> <laughs> they just moved out to three-point land. Yeah, all of a sudden, you know, Kevin Durant is a seven-footer, but he's, you know, playing like he's a shooting guard. Even Dirk, you know, in a, in a previous lifetime, he'd be Jack Sigma. And then he all of a sudden took it out deeper than that. But um, no, I, I would start with Kobe over Shaq but I I do think at some point somebody does hey have a counterattack to all the three-point shooting and that they do have something that's inside uh that that you you dominate inside but a lot of these teams will let you have two because they're going to get a three for more Dan Patrick show tune in to audience channel 239 on direct tv stream for free on br live or download the Dan Patrick show app